stay tuned and let's check out this NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 pack with Slash and Leatherhead. Hello and welcome back to the channel, Dan Who Reviews. As always, my name is Dan W. Make sure you are following me on Instagram at it's Dan Who. Today we continue to look at these NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle 2 packs and today is all about Slash and Leatherhead. Now I love these cartoon 2 packs. It ticks that nostalgia box for me. As just like Marvel, I grew up watching these cartoons and I love that all these years later now we're getting figures that are accurate to their appearances from the cartoon. I know we had all these nostalgic toys of the kid but these are new accurate renditions of these characters from the cartoon for our shelves and this is Slash and Leatherhead. So this box is massive, just as thick as the box that Bebop and Rocksteady come in if you've had that. And I appreciate that these are quite sought after in the US right now as they are Target exclusives. When the, in the UK, I got mine pre-ordered from Comic and Cocktails, hassle-free, never had a problem with any of my NECA products with them. So I do highly recommend Comic and Cocktails, link in the description below. So as always, I appreciate the window packaging so you can see all of the fun Easter eggs and accessories in the box. And they look great just in the packaging with this cartoon style but I will open it up we've got the logo at the top on the back we get a promo image of Leatherhead and Slash we get a little write up if you want to pre uh, read that you can pause it now and we also get a list of all the other figures in this particular wave I should already have a review of April and the Foot Soldier up I will get to Casey Jones and the Foot Soldier and if you're interested let me know as I can also open up Bebop and Rocksteady but there'll be playlists and check out the video tab and all of that good stuff but today is about Slash and Leatherhead. So let's open them up. So here we have a Slash and Leatherhead out of the packaging and they look great. Let's be honest, first impressions is like the cartoon characters have jumped out of the screen and they are now on my review table. They look great and they come with plenty of episode Pacific Easter egg and accessories, which I appreciate. So let's break them down as well. But let's do them just this and take a look at them one at a time. And let's start off with Slash. And here's a closer look at Slash, and let's be honest, he looks great. So he is an evil turtle, obviously. So he's on the turtle body just, just with all these upgrades. So we've got like the shoulder pads, uh, the belt, the wrists, the knees, the spikes on the toes, obviously spikes on the shell as well, which hold this bag in place. And this bag is a separate piece. It will come off if you wanted to, but I quite like the added accessories for all the sci-fi elements that he got from the dimension. Um, but there is a backstory between Slash uh, he was originally Bebop's pet turtle that he kept under his bed in a little bowl. And then Rocksteady used Mutagen on him to turn him into his turtle form to basically do the chores. Because Rocksteady and Bebop didn't want to do the chores that Shredder was asking him to do. So they thought if they turned this turtle, uh, they could maybe get the turtle to do it. But it all backfired because Slash wanted his binky. What is his binky, you ask? His binky is his little palm tree that was in the turtle uh, bowl when he was a baby and uh, they've actually packed it in as an accessory slash actually has his little binky it's essentially a little plastic palm tree and what's so cool is that they've actually packed in a little baby slash so this turtle isn't just a random baby turtle this is baby slash before he had the mutagen on him so he basically was in his turtle bowl with his little binky and uh yeah basically so when slash turned into his more mutinized form he wanted his binky and he went around looking for it and uh yeah chaos ensued and um, but yeah he looks great and he has some nice accessories as well so his main ones are his katanas which were shredders katanas and he only comes with fisted hands uh, well gripping hands sorry so he will grip the uh both swords very nicely to be fair um, as he should. These are his trademark weapons, so these are the ones you want him to hold. And uh, yeah, they look great. So Slash definitely looks great with these in hand. Uh, he also comes with a pizza because, let's be honest, he's a turtle. Turtles love their pizza and it's got a big bite mark on it. So you can actually just shove that in his jaw and uh, get him to just have it in his mouth, I think. There you go. So there's Slash enjoying his pizza with a big bite mark. And again, it's the Teenage Mutant and Turtle line. Can never get enough pizzas so yeah no complaints with that packing 
So yeah, he also comes with a couple of other weapons, which are firstly this little sci-fi gun. And again, this design is specific to a certain episode. I think this was Donatello's, I can't remember, but I like how this gun sort of, sort of this section sits away from the body and on some soft plastic. So uh, yeah, it's a bit different, a bit soft, but it works. I like the design. He also comes with this other crazy sci-fi blaster. And again, this design isn't random. It is specific to the episodes. That's what's so good about the Snecker line is that everything is a deep cut from the show and um, so yeah again this could have been Donatello's I can't remember but still he has two gripping hands obviously so he can hold um, both uh, gripping parts of the gun no trigger fingers of course but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter so yeah slash his hands even though he has one set it will hold all of his accessories including his binky so there's Slash holding his katanas and I'm not going to go crazy over articulation as he essentially has the same articulation as the turtles. So there's no way you're this deep in this line and you don't know what that articulation is. But he has all these added pieces on which I've already said and this will come off if you want to. It's just got a soft plastic so you can sort of work it off. But I'm going to keep it on. I quite like how it sits with the spikes. Uh, but yeah, I love the paint on this. Definitely looks like it's jumped straight out of the TV. So yeah, loving Slash. Moving on to Leatherhead, who was a beast of a figure, by the way. So let's first put him together as his tail comes detached from him uh, in the box. So if we're turning around, you'll see the peg there. And then there's a hole there. And all you need to do is pop it in. But as I said, make sure you warm up the joints first and be careful squeezing his tail because it's quite spiky. But uh, yeah, just one quick look at Leatherhead before we check out all his accessories. He looks great. The belt's a separate piece which you can manipulate and move around, which I've just moved around a little bit. Um, and you can attach accessories onto a belt, which I'll show you in a minute. But yeah, decent articulation on the arms. I think he shares pieces uh, with Rocksteady and Bebop in that regard. Um, as I said, he's a beast. An articulated jaw, I'll show you a close up in a minute. But again, it looks like he's jumped straight out of the TV screen. He looks great, very happy with this guy. So let's check out all of these added accessories because he's got a lot. So here's a closer look at Leatherhead. And as I said, he's got that articulated jaw. So you can get it closed tight as that, I guess but it will open nice and wide as well. And it is all painted with sharp teeth in there. Yeah, so we can get them biting down on the turtles or whatnot. Does give them a bit of expression for the shelf though as well. Uh, and the hat is glued on there, that doesn't come off. Um, the jacket looks decent enough, all those sculpted on pockets and whatnot. And then there's that spiky tail, which I told you, be careful, it's sharp. And then there's that belt, which I've already showed you. So he comes packed with two fisted hands. A set of sort of open palms, grabby hands. Either way, I like them. And then a set of more grippy, grabby hands, I guess. That one looks like a trigger finger hand. So I guess these are for holding some of his accessories. First up, we have this gun, which he seems to hold nice and tightly in this trigger for hand. Now it is a tight squeeze. I've actually got some paint rub on the gun uh, because I was squeezing it into the hand. But it does seem like this hand is built for holding this gun. A finger actually goes into the trigger and he holds it nice and tight so you can get him posing this. It's like a flamethrower from a particular episode, I believe. So it's very uh, specific to the cartoon uh, as expected with all of these accessories. But yeah, that's a nice touch. He will hold that nice and tight. Uh, just be careful because it is a tight squeeze. We're also getting this nice little bear trap, uh, which actually articulates... And you can lay it on the floor like a proper bear trap, which is a very nice touch. And what's even better is that you can clip this onto his belt. So if I bring Leatherhead back in, you can see that he's got this sort of clip on the back of his belt there. There you go. It fits on his belt, not a problem. And does it hold tight? It seems to hold tight. So Leatherhead can go around carrying his little bear trap on his belt, which is a nice touch. He also comes with two of these little claw daddy sort of lobsters, which he uses for many things, handcuffs and whatnot. And he gets two of them and he can hold them, not a problem as you can see. Um, but if you're very clever, you can sort of squeeze them under his belt as well, as is seen with these attached to his belt. So there you go, I've attached them both to his belt, but I've not officially attached them. I've basically just put them under the soft plastic of the belt, but they do hold there nicely. The belt sits there, he's still got his bear trap on. So it does seem to work, but if there is an official way to attach them onto him, please let me know because I haven't figured it out. Leatherhead also comes with this sort of handcuff piece, which does clip like that. And it's attached to a real chain and there's a decent little amount there as well. So you can sort of attach this 
to his wrist if you wanted to, just so he's dragging around the chain. So there's that, not a problem, it dangles as you can see. But you can actually use this to capture some turtles as well. So let me show you that real quick. Poor Donatello has that chain literally clipped on to his neck so that fits on there so Leatherhead can capture the turtles and again you could just maybe get Leatherhead to hold um, this piece uh, between the fingers uh, or wrap it around the hand or whatever you want to do there you go sort of Leatherhead could just hold it like that and drag poor Donatello around it also fits around poor April's waist and then lastly, you also get packed in this bag at the back of the box, which seems to have a rope in it and some net. So I haven't actually tucked this out of the bag yet, but we can do that right now. Um, so it does seem to be quite a thick piece of rope. So there's that bag. So there's the rope, which is just a simple rope, uh, but it's also already got a hoop sort of wrapped around it. So I'm guessing this could be for capturing some turtles again. So where's poor Donatello? Um, sorry, mate. Um, but I'm guessing he can be captured again. There you go. So again, Leatherhead could maybe hold this end and uh, drag Donatello or whoever is captured around with him. Sad times. Uh, so yeah, that's a nice little piece. And then you also get this net and it's quite a big net as well. Like that covers my screen. You can even catch a leatherhead, and leatherhead's massive. So uh, yeah, that's a decent sized net. So I'm guessing you could grab some turtles. It's got a bit of string on all the corners. So maybe you can set some turtle traps, grab the corners, and uh, tie that up maybe, and then get leatherhead sort of carrying it over his shoulder like a hobo bag or whatever. So yeah, there's plenty of options with this leatherhead. So yeah, the ACBA people are gonna love this. So many options, I don't even know how I'm gonna pose him on my shelf. But yes, you're even getting a rope and a net. So let's finish it on scale. So here we have poor Donatello who's been through the ringer today compared to Slash and Leatherhead. And as you can see, Slash is a little bit taller than Donatello, but they do share the same base body. Just Slash had his modifications and then Leatherhead, of course, towers above the two. So if I move Donatello out the way, let's bring in April O'Neil. And as you can see, April O'Neil is Still a little bit taller than Slash, which I'm happy with. And then, obviously, Leatherhead towers above her as well. Who else have I got on the table? I have Krang in his walker. And as you can see, both of them are much bigger than Krang, but even Krang scales well. Can't wait for that android body, which should tower above them all. And then last but not least, let's just bring in a random foot soldier, which you can, as you can see, towers above the turtle, but still not as big as Leatherhead. So obviously stick around as I open these two packs, I will do more comparisons. I think I'm gonna do a review of Rocksteady and Bebop, even though I'm a little late, uh, and then we can see how he scales, uh, well, Leatherhead scales compared to those two massive figures as well. So stay tuned. Final thoughts, this is another solid two-pack offering from NECA. Two brand new characters to expand our TMNT cartoon universe and two great choices as well with Slash and Leatherhead. I never really told you much about Leatherhead, but he was basically mutated in the same swamp as those four uh, frogs. So I'm hoping we do get those frogs at some point um, as they should be a simple release for uh, two packs and whatnot. So I'm no, I am know Necker's aware. They're not silly. When they're packing in all these Easter eggs, they're aware of the frogs. But uh, yeah, Slash and Leatherhead look great. So you let me know what you think in the comments below of these two figures. I think they've jumped straight out of the cartoon onto my table. And are you getting all of these two packs from Necker? Are you struggling to get them? Have you caught up? Let me know. Always curious to hear your thoughts in the comments below. But as always, if you want to see more NECA reviews and more TMNT Turtle reviews, then please stick around on the channel as I do have a playlist. But most importantly, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. Much, much appreciated. And as always, if you want to support the channel that little bit more, you can on Patreon. But until then, people, my name is Dan W. Go and eat some pizza and I will see you on the next one.